Talk time with Reed Moriarty. So high five, Bob Springer. <laughs> so, I'm so glad you're an astronaut on Discovery and Atlantis show flights, Bob. What goes through your mind when you watch a rocket launch now? Oh, it's still thrilling to see it. Uh, the, the rockets we're launching now from the Kennedy Space Center here on the East Coast are all uh, unmanned rockets right now. So, it, But it's still exciting. Yeah. Okay, the rocket launch must be so loud. I wear headphones to school because my classmates are loud. Do you wear headphones inside the shuttle, Bob? Well, we do, and they're actually built into the helmets that we wear. It is. It's incredibly noisy inside. Uh, really, really noisy. Particularly right there when, when the engines ignite and, and when you're getting ready to lift off. Uh, tremendous noise. All yes. right, so Bob, what was your first job as a kid? My first job as a kid? I was actually a paper boy. All right. Now, what you have to do is ask me, what was my favorite job as a kid? Yeah, maybe I could ask that someday. So why do you think our astronaut uniforms are white instead of orange or camo? Well, some are white, some are orange, none are camo. All right. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Why do you think they're orange instead of blue? Because I think orange is the best color in space. No, it actually has to do, if you had an emergency and you had to bail out of the orbiter, you would probably land in the ocean and they'd never find you in a blue suit. Of course. <laughs> Practical. Right. That's really awesome. During my lifetime, Bob, what do you think will be the most important breakthrough in space exploration? In your lifetime, I think we'll see a new type of propulsion, a new type of rocket engine. And that's what we need if we're going to go to Mars. All right. You can tell me a funny story, Bob, about astronaut training? The, the training is very, very intense, but there are some funny things that happen from time to time. And uh, one of the funny ones was we were preparing to do a, an emergency evacuation from the shuttle just during the training phase. And the guy in front of me kind of stopped in the hatch and I didn't stop and I just pushed him out and he kind of fell out on his nose. All right. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, we're supposed to be doing this fast. Of course. So Bob, if you couldn't have been an astronaut for some reason, what other career, career would you have chosen? Well, see, I started mm -hmm. out uh, after I graduated from college, I went in the Marine Corps and I was a pilot in the Marine Corps. And uh, it's interesting because that's one of the questions they ask you when you apply for the astronaut program. If you don't get selected, what are you going to do? What I said is, I'll go back to being a pilot. They always start the interview off and with the same question. Starting with high school, tell us about yourself. And, and you talk until they, and what they will do is, is interject at times and ask you usually some sort of esoteric question. Not so much because they want to know the answer, but rather, how are you going to answer the question? And I, I laugh about this because John Young, who's one of the most experienced sh uh, astronauts that we've ever had, and during my interview, he said, uh, so, uh, Colonel Springer, I see that you're, um, you've been at the test pilot school. What can you tell this group about the uh, gun gas burning problem on the F-14 airplane? Well, what Captain Young didn't know was, and this is the fate part of it, uh, I had been head of what they called uh, weapon systems test, and that had been one of my projects. And so I launched, and I'm an engineer by education, so I launched into this detailed explanation. I mean, I know all about the gun gas burn, and they didn't expect that. And about a minute and a half into it, it's like, yeah, that's good. The contrary side of that is when um, there was one guy who was very, very experienced, and, and I, I think would have made a great astronaut, but when they asked, they, the question they asked him, well, I see here that you, uh, you don't play a musical instrument. And, and the answer should have been so respectfully, but so what? But he didn't, he went, he panicked. He said, I don't know, what, I can learn. What instrument do you want me to play? And it's like, eh. All right, amazing. What would you compare space travel to that we know on Earth? Being a pilot and, and flying is, is okay, getting there. It's, it's not, I mean, nothing else really relates to the space travel because when you're in space, you're weightless. More like scuba diving. Uh, where, where you, uh, when you scuba dive, uh, you have that freedom of movement because you don't have any umbilical or anything like that. And uh, if, you, if you do much scuba diving, uh, you get to the point where you get neutrally buoyant in the water so that you can stay like 20 feet under the water or something like that. 
And, and so that's, that's a close simulation. In fact, we use that technique as part of our training to simulate the effects of weightlessness in space. All right. That's awesome, Bob. What does Earth look like from space? Well, it's interesting when from the space shuttle, we're only about two to 300 miles in space. And so when we look at back at Earth, you don't see, you probably have seen the picture that the Apollo astronauts took where you can see the Earth is a globe, just a small ball. We don't see that. Since we're only 200, 300 miles away, we just see a portion of the Earth's surface. But it's really what you're able to see, you're close enough that you can see the beauty of the planet. All right. Does being in space make you feel closer to heaven, Bob? It, it does from a, uh, a spiritual standpoint. Not in terms of a distant standpoint, but in a, a spiritual sense. Uh, because when you look outside your spacecraft and you see all these magnificent things out there, you realize it didn't happen by accident. It's all part of God's plan. Of course. Of course, Bob Springer. What's your favorite movie about space, Bob? Apollo 13. Apollo 13? I like space talks. It's all about space. Have you seen the Apollo 13 movie? No. You, you, need, to, you need to see it. It's probably the best one ever made. Have you ever seen The Martian? I did see that movie, and not only that, but right after I saw the movie, I got to talk to one of the scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory who drives the landers, the rovers, on Mars. And so he was able to kind of confirm, you know, what the, the topography and, and what the environment was like is, is really pretty realistic. All right. Okay. What do you think is the best attraction at the Kennedy Space Center? Oh, there's no doubt in that. It is the Atlantis exhibit. All right. <laughs> That's what it says on your shirt. That is the spaceship I flew. Talk time with Reed Moriarty. Atlanta. Atlanta.